Blake turned down a five-year, $40 million contract offer from the Kings, LAGM Dave Taylor had just two options. Trade one of the hardest-hitting, highest-scoring defensemen in the league or let him walk away as an unrestricted free agent. You know, what happened is we got two great players in return in Adam Deadmarsh and Aaron Miller, and that was a trade that uh, I don't think we'll ever see uh, the likes of it again, and it set a standard that other GMs are going to have a tough time living up to. The Colorado Avalanche are a team full of superstars. The names alone can put fear into the hearts of their opponents. The Hart Trophy goes to Joe Sackett. The Lady Bing Trophy goes to Joe Sackett. Colorado had already cruised through the regular season on their way to the President's Trophy, amassing 118 points along the way. Boy, this Avalanche team is really really good. The Avalanche weren't a team that strictly needed another great defenseman. Heck, they didn't really need anyone. Fourth in goals for, third in goals against, and 52 wins on the season solidified them as regular season champions. But for a team that good, that ain't enough. It was cup or bust for them, and they were in a great spot, but GM Pierre Lacroix took advantage of a contract dispute between the Kings and Rob Blake to secure him and rookie center Steve Reinprecht, who often gets overlooked in this deal, as the rookie was only 24, but he was on pace for over 50 points both full seasons with the Avalanche. He was good. In any case, giving up the fan favorites didn't go over quite as well. Deadmarsh's best friend, one Peter Forsberg, was really, really mad about this, especially given their friendship and difficult pregnancy for Deadmarsh's wife Krista months prior. He went to Pierre Lacroix and let him have it. But what was done, was done. After sweeping the Canucks, coming from behind to win three of the four, they could not have had a better start in their hopes for a championship. But let's look at their actual lineup. Everybody knows about their superstars, Wah, Forsberg, Bork, but these Avalanche were so skilled and so deep, I'm going to mention the oft-forgotten contingent of elite players instead and skip over the superstars. Except for Joe Sackick. I have to mention him because he had the most successful season of his 20-year career. Look at all that hardware. And while he was on the wrong side of 30 and had an expiring contract this year, he would still go on to score over 460 points with the Avalanche until he retired in 2008-09. It's funny to think about, but people weren't actually positive he would re-sign with the Avs. Next up, one Milan Hayduk, a 50-goal scorer and 14-year veteran of the Colorado Avalanche when all was said and done. The Duke was a consistent mainstay in the Avalanche's top six around the turn of the millennium, which was very, very rare air to be in, and he never looked out of place. So much so that the Avalanche retired his number in 2018. Everyone's favorite trivia answer, Chris Drury only spent four years in Colorado from 1998 to 2002, but he amassed 202 points in 314 games. Pretty darn good. However, that really betrays how clutch he was. Six goals in his rookie playoffs year, and four of them were game winners. 14 points in 17 games in the next playoffs, and in that year's series against Vancouver, four goals in four games. At the time of his retirement, he had four overtime goals in the playoffs, then tied for fifth best all time. His longtime wingman was playmaker Alex Tangay, one of my favorite players ever and one of the few players who was crafty enough to thrive in both modern day and the dead puck era. He racked up 400 points in his first stint with Colorado from 1999 to 2006, and similarly stuck around in the two lines of best offense in the league for the better part of a decade. Lastly, I can't ignore the big, bad Rob Blake and his role in this matchup. Having scored 49 points in 54 games with the Kings that season as a defenseman, and over 400 so far in his career, there were high expectations for him on a high expectations team, and he met them, netting 5 points in the 4 games against the Canucks. But performance wasn't the biggest thing on his mind. It was that he was going up against his former team. The Avalanche were easily the superior team when measured against the Kings. Star power? Check. Effective role players? Check. Depth scoring? Well, not really, but they didn't need it. Defense? Hip check. Goaltending? Oh yeah. 
One thing I should mention is that the departure of Adam Deadmarsh opened the door for one 23-year-old Vili Niemannen, who had apparently developed his game under grinders and power forwards like Deadmarsh and mentor Dave Reed. His growth as a player is one of the things that allowed the Avalanche to make the Blake Deadmarsh Miller trade comfortably. But the fact that this team was facing them was still uncomfortable. Never in NHL history until then had a captain traded midseason faced his former team in that year's playoffs. On top of being the underdogs, if the Kings managed to beat the Avalanche after giving up their captain, it would be a massive FU to Blake and something he'd have to carry with him forever. And early signs for him weren't good. The Kings stood tall in the first period, allowing the Avalanche no good looks for a solid 10 minutes. The Avalanche gave them nothing either. Well, almost nothing. They just cannot handle it. They can't come back. You've got to be safe early in the game. Glenn Murray scores from the right wing! Glenn Murray! There was a lot of talk about Patrick Waugh not performing up to snuff in the Av series against Vancouver, and on the third play from scrimmage, the most unlucky deflection gets by him. Not his fault, but it's still an early goal against. The Avs, and Waz, mental toughness would be put to the test early. In by Drury. Drury eludes a check from Scott Thomas. Drury still with it. Drives to the net. In front, he shoots. He scores! What a goal by Chris Drury to tie the game at one to one This was his team leading fifth goal. Every other game, it seemed like he'd pull some kind of magic act goal like this one. Seriously, look him up. He's got a lot of them. The Kings seemed to buckle a little bit after that goal, no doubt intimidated by their foe, but they escaped the first period with a tie. Not bad. Shoots and a glove save by Potvin. And you have to change the lines. Here's Forsberg behind the King net. Forsberg hanging on, he shoots, save, rebound. In the second, the Avalanche struggled to break it until it came home to hurt. Nice. Forsberg looked like his stick was held up. Here's Rob Blake, he shoots, he scores! If you're the Kings, ouch. It was probably inevitably going to happen at some point. Palfi inexplicably tried to cross over with Kyrilotti, and that opens up like the entire state of Kansas for Blake. And the shot's just too much for Podvan to get all of it. And that took even more life out of the Kings. Across the line, left side, Forsberg shoots up high. Rebound to the right point. Held in there, shot wide to the left by Skula as it bounced wide. Held in again. Edmarsh, his pass, right point. Carolotti held it in, but the Avalanche took it away. Stolen, up the middle by Deadmarsh. In front, backhander, score! Nelson Emerson got the puck and tied the game at 2-2 two to two as Deadmarsh got the play started. Shots in the second were 14-2 Avalanche, but the Kings would make theirs count. And that's all that matters. Watch the traffic driving to the net. By backing off right there, Dead Marsh bought himself some time. Emerson goes tweeners. Kings tie it up. Most of the second period was marred by a penalty parade. But despite getting the business end of it, Potvin was equal to the task between the pipes. Got it over to Tangay. A shot saved by Potvin. And into the third. Potvan was making a great case for first star of the game. Into the slot to Drury and a save in the glove. But more third period penalties put his team in jeopardy, flirting with disaster. And a shot by Sackett wide. Rebound to Hayduke. To Bork. Bork. His shot deflected up high. Taken in behind the net by Blake to Tange and his shot. Hit somebody in front. Back to Tange. To Bork. Bork hangs on to Tange, right side to Blake, shoots, save Tange, shot it wide. He had an open corner and he shot it wide. Forsberg looking for a trailer, pass up the middle, shot, save, rebound. Drury got stopped by Potvin. Around him, but it didn't look like there was any contact. Here's Smolensky to Murray, he scores! Glenn Murray with his second of the game and the Kings lead. Let me tell you, if I was Patrick Waugh, I would want to crawl under a rock or a Ruwak. All three goals against were pretty suspect. I wish I could say this was the worst of the bunch, but really it was just the third of the bunch. Waugh endeared himself with a few subsequent saves, and the Kings took another penalty, which ended up being one too many. Shoots and front score! Forsberg! And the game is tied with 4.30 to go! It was a tough bounce, but nothing that isn't unexpected in the playoffs. 
The Kings had let the lead slip away, and against the Avalanche, that's really bad news. However, all of Waugh's goals had been suspect to that point, so all they really needed was one more good bounce to get past, and the game would be theirs. In front alone, he shoots! Forsberg with Clem! Forsberg! Can't get the shot in! Hands to the blue line and into the King's zone. Joe Sackett shoots! Saved by... Into the zone. Taken by Bookberger. Shoots! Safe! Rebound! Right side. Pulled down. Pass in front. Up the middle. Carolani! His shot! Blocked! And we're going to sudden death overtime. Forsberg. Forsberg. Right side. Here's Drury. Backhander. Save and a rebound. And overtime. Stumple went forward with it. Throws it in front. Loose puck. Pelfi shoots. Saved by Waugh. Tipped away, but now the Kings get it to Ziggy. Here's Pelfi. Across the line. Down the middle. In front. Pull down. Penalty to Colorado. Schneider waits. He gives it to Stumple. Stumple, his pass right side, one-timer score! Kings win in overtime! Yaroslav Modri from the right side, and the Kings have beaten... At point eight eight six, Wa had the lowest save percentage in the playoffs to date, and yeah, he was not good in game one, but credit to the Kings, they managed to put up four goals on him, which in the clutch and grab era is more like eight. Potvan, by contrast, was 5-0 and in his last playoff starts. If it wasn't obvious already, he had solved their goaltending question that they had earlier in the season, and put his team in the best position they could be against the worst opponent they could have hoped for. Colorado, the best team in the NHL, they swept Vancouver. After a sleepy first few minutes, the Avs were the ones to open the game up. Curry has been the hero so far, got it in the middle, Parkman, with another big save! A roughing call on Joseph Stumple set the Kings' playoff worst PK out onto the ice. Shot that one wide, Potvin on a save. Running out of time, five seconds left on it. Near side, Clem, a shot and a save made by Potvin. They didn't get burned for it, but a trip on John Clem saw them go on the power play instead. Three assists in the last four games. Ray Bork, bad pass. Modry shot that one wide, a turnover by Ray Bork. The Avs didn't get burned either, and they only got better at even strength. Low, Forsberg, a back Tells you how tough they're playing. Oh, they've got the jump. Foot got it up ice. Stop the outside of the net. Hey, Duke. But both teams held defensively to escape the first. Nothing to nothing. A really iffy call on Carlotti mere seconds into the middle frame was almost a godsend for the Kings. And it. Up ice, a step in, short ended chance. What? Score! They crossed the line. No, they wave it off. Ray Bork got that out of midair. They wave it off. It was in the air. Shot wide. But it ended up biting them on the scoreboard. All the same. Deflected in front, turn around to Forsberg. Shot, Messier once, twice, score! No! Yes, it counts! Messier! The official waited and then looked. And Billy Nieminen will get credit for the goal. The goal went to video review because there was a debate over whether or not Bork saved their shot before it crossed the goal line, and man, was that close. But it was not over. Here's a good angle. Let's see what we can tell from this one. This is a great angle. Get out of the way, guys! Hey, y'all, get out of the way! Oh. Ray Bork with it. Oh. Only in the Stanley Cup playoffs, folks, do we end up with situations like this that keep us talking for summers to come. The Avs, spurred on by the Pepsi Center crowd, poured it on. Potvin with a save. There was no rebound, never got through. Here's Palfi. Palfi and Wah makes the save. Good hit by Palfi on the clear up by foot near side. Billy Neiman and couldn't get it out. Nelson Emerson, no! On his backside by Raymond Bork. And the Avs pick it back up. Blake Cotting shot. Renfret, Renfret, rebound went wide. And he meant on the ice power play. Great move by Drury to get it. Forsberg to Drury. Not quite. As it's still just a 1 0 lead. The centering pass for Yell. Blocked him. Potvin. He made a save. Puck still. Low. On the whole, while the Avs had the clear advantage, the second was generally pretty low key. The third was even worse until a former Avalanche nearly hit Pater. Cutting Deadmarsh in, Deadmarsh hit the post, hit the post and it came out. Despite being outplayed, again, the Kings were only down one goal 
and they had every reason to believe that Waugh had another soft goal in him given his performance last game. But they got zero shots in the first half of remaining regulation and made some crucial mistakes. Bouncing puck cleared in the middle. Sackett, defenseman foul. Joe Sackett scores! Aaron Miller falls down on the play, though he wouldn't have caught Sackett anyway, and Sackett boinks it, twicks the fair netting with that classic killer wrister. A good thing, too, is he was pretty quiet in the series so far and was in serious jeopardy of renting out some goat horns. But the Kings couldn't find that same underdog spark late in the game, and the Avalanche cruised to a 2-0 lead, landing Patrick Waugh the all-time mark for playoff shutouts. It was all back to formula for the Avalanche, who, quite frankly, had built the perfect beast up and down the roster. Everyone was chipping in, even if it didn't show on the scoreboard. Waugh and his shutout record were just the highlight of it. But at the same time, they were only even when they should be up 2-0. No offense to the Kings, but they should. Fortunately for LA, the Avs were 1-9-1 and and in the Staples Center the last five years. The team that never seemed to go away seemed primed, if history was anything to go by, to get the leg up on the juggernaut Avs again. Potvan was undefeated at home in the playoffs, another stat that his team could rally around. Now, I can't put my finger on it, but my spidey senses tell me that's the kind of streak that tends to continue at very inconvenient times for the opponent. Rob Blake got booed hard. Blake, Blake, the other boos, down low. Every time he touched the puck, it sounded like a pit was opening up to hell. He'll have to get back on side. 57 seconds left to go. Blake with it. For the time being, at least, he would get the last laugh. Check by Colby up for Blake. Blue line blast. And he scored! A saw! From the blue line by, of all people, Rob Blake, it trickled through on Potman. Man, what a break for Colorado. I'm sorry, the way that puck sheepishly rolled in is so funny to me. Boy, Waz's goals in Game 1 were soft, but this, this is wafer thin. Especially with the psychological oomph of it being Rob Blake who scored. Bill Clement summed it up well. And he had to have assumed that he had everything sealed off. He did not. The unbeatable at home Felix Podvan wasn't so indefatigable after all. However, the game was still young. The shots are 4 0. So everything Los Angeles wanted to do early in this game, not only hasn't it happened, everything they didn't want to happen has already. Wounded, the best the Kings could do in the middle third of the period was to dribble pucks at Wa. They barely had any shot for the balance of the first. They just kept taking bad penalties in the first. Too deep in the offensive zone. And all, especially this one, pointless. The Avalanche converted none of them, though. That was starting to become its own storyline, especially now that it appeared Sackick had left the game. And it could very well bite him. Rob Blake would get the gate for his own roughing penalty, indefensibly and mind-bogglingly checking Scott Thomas after the whistle. And then, six seconds into the penalty, Foot got whistled for obstruction. And just like that, it was a five-on-three. Robitai leaves it up the near side, got it down to Palfi center, tried to it, got deflected, Raymond Borch. Smolinski, need to shoot, need to shoot, center, shot, covered by oh. It was behind him and Ziggy Palfi could not drive it home and Raymond Borch was down there helping Wah again. I gotta see this. Let it go to Snyder, Snyder with room. In front, Stumpel scores! Well, better late than never. Robitaille puts home a feed from Palfi after a really brutal failed lift check by John Clem in the crease. And now we're tied. The Kings would get another penalty at the close of the first, but again not be burned for it. One day. We wouldn't need to wait long for excitement in the second. Los Angeles in the first do what they wanted to do. They've double shifted Joseph Stumpel and Ziggy Palfi. They are the two leading ice eater uppers. Forsberg! Oh! A big save, rebound underneath the cat. Two great chances, Forsberg and Hey Duke. The Avalanche came out ready to go, and the Kings were a half step behind. Move the shot, he missed it. Things got a little testy toward the middle of regulation as scoring chances became fewer and farther between. Further between? Shots at this point were only 12 to 7 for Colorado. Oh, Clem finally gets it out. Norris from backcourt. 
Dane tried it one. It stuck along the boards. Hey Duke got it. Hey Duke shot. Save me. Rebound popping down on the ice. Score Peter Forsberg. He could not get back up. Peter Forsberg picked up the loose puck. The Kings are arguing like crazy, but unfortunately for them, the refs are in play. This puck hit a linesman in the neutral zone, and that's the only reason the rush continued for Milan Heydu. The Kings were right to be upset. The linesman accidentally lends a helping skate to Heyduk here. Aside from that, this was a beer league goal. A shot off the rush, it deflects all over the place until somebody whacks it at the goalie from below the goal line. Somehow, it finds F3's stick perfectly and he's got a wide open net. Happens every single D-League game, I swear. There they go. Two off. We'll have a four on four. We are reasonably certain this is Kurt Russell. And that he's not pregnant. Blocked it. Foot put the hit on. And the puck centered. Shot. Save made by Waugh. Peter Forsberg with Hey Duke cutting. Raymond Bork with him. Bork down low. Bork behind the net. Bork backhand chance. Save made. Cut here. Nelson Emerson. Emerson moves it in. Dropped it off Smolenski. And a big save by Waugh. The Avs were doubling up the Kings in shots. But it just wasn't really close. Early in the third, though, the Kings would get a break from the officials. Robitaille sells a phantom high stick call. But given how unsatisfied LA had been with the refs, they're not complaining. Take the time for the conference anyway. No. Wisnowski into the middle. Murray is Robitaille. Saved by Wah. To the near side. Here's Snyder. He leads the team in shots. That's why Wah rebound. Lou Smolenski. Wah's got it. No, it's covered by Yale without a stick. Was trying to find it, no whistle. Smolenski digging it. They didn't convert though. And then Joseph Stumpled tugged Drury's jersey, and he definitely sold that too. Should have been four on four, but only Stumple went to the box. And the officiating was kind of rough. The Kings killed the penalty. Got it up. Ooh, big check, Carlotti. Aggressively. But then the bottom dropped out. Right through the crease intended for Murray. Here comes Forsberg with Haydu. Haydu! Milan Hado in a two on one. That was the Avs' only shot of the third period. And yet they were a team so skilled and so fine tuned, one shot was all they needed to make a two goal lead seem like 10. Another Avalanche penalty gave the Kings' power play another crack at it. But the Avs would kill it off. Steve Murray this. shot and score! Power play goal! So never mind. The Kings had life. 10 minutes was plenty of time to get one back. Halfway through the third, it was anybody's game. We apologize. We have missed a goal. What? And uh, there is no way we can uh, make up for it except to tell you we screwed up. John Clem has scored a goal, and it is now 4-2. The avalanche on top. Play was supposed to be stopped after that last goal, and it wasn't, and we missed it. Have you ever seen that before? Just a broadcast completely missing a goal? Apparently at the rink, there was no stoppage for a TV timeout, but ESPN cut to one, rightfully expecting there to be. So, known sniper John Clem missed out on one of his hundreds of career goals being broadcast to the nation. Also, great hands by Tange. What a guy. The most backbreaking of backbreaking goals would sink the Kings in Game 3, and nobody saw it. He's got it near side, Schneider. Schneider the wrist. First goal! Ziggy Pofi at the side of the net. The Kings finally managed to outshoot the Avs, but it was only 25 to 21. It really just came down to bounces and bad breaks, it seemed. Just like after the first game, the somewhat longer leash the Kings press had given their team was running short, especially regarding Ziggy Pofi, who was barely showing up on the ice and not at all on the scoreboard. The Kings offensive leader could not afford to do anything aside from match Colorado's star power if the Kings had any hope of not being run out of the building. Especially now considering Sakic would miss games 4 and 5 with a bum shoulder. Now was his opportunity to rise to the occasion. But that ask may have just been too tall. In the early goings, it seemed like the Avalanche were trying to gift the Kings a goal. Gotta shoot. On top, Snyder faked the shot while the save short side. Smolenski right into the face of Wah. And a save made Adam Denmarsh with the last chance. But they just didn't take what the Avs were giving them. Colorado give Wah, them. bad play! Centering pass went wide as Snyder knocked it down. The puck running out of time on the power play. Two seconds left. 
Layers side, nope, they hold it. Coffee got his man down. Coffee instead of shooting, passed it to Dead March. They have done that for the last three games. Gary. True to form, the Avalanche had no qualms about getting rubber on Podfan. Be revised for Colorado in front. Shot once, twice. Poppins got it. And high note denied. I don't think a single defenseman touched the puck in the first period. Rebound shots right there at the top of the crease. Walk can't find it. Came all the way back to the top of the slot. Miller's shot. That got blocked. Inside. That hit. Blake and one of the save. Rebound still loose. Penalty coming. There. It looked like they were twisted around, but good pressure gives the abs some credit. Messier and he do with good pressure. Here's Robitaille open. Wild makes the save, but Robitaille had a chance. Carlotti joining the play. The trailer. Carlotti in the middle for a backhander. Through the crease. Not quite on the lineup by Smolinski. Despite a spirited 10 to 3 shooting effort by the Kings, both teams escaped the first period without getting scored on. The Avs wasted no time in the middle frame, lighting the burner under the Kings. Alex Tangay took a scary-looking puck right off the neck, ow, and was sidelined for a hot second. But he returned, soon after, just his little treat, to do this. He tipped it in on net, Forsberg's down on the ice. No call. In front, look at Tangay center, SCORE! Rob Blake sneaking in from the right side, Tangay got it to him! And it is a 1-0 Avs lead. This is what we call a critical error on the part of the Kings' defense. Alex Tangay, a very underrated offensive threat for the Avs, grew a full beard by the time a King even knew he was there, and he is justly rewarded with a lucky bounce to break the ice. This is the kind of mistake you cannot make against the Avalanche. Or ever, really. Rob Blake gave of his heart and his soul to this organization. It's got to really hurt him to get rude every time he touches the puck. On the score sheet or not, the Kings and their fans were watching Rob Blake manhandle them in scoring plays against. When two teams face each other after a trade, if the skill level of players involved is something even close to comparable, the performance of the players in that matchup for some reasons quickly becomes a game of who won the trade. And right now, it looks like the Avalanche. Kings gonna shut this down. Boys were again a little hooked by LaPerriere, but he held it to foot, a shot. Back Tangay to Clem, Clem shot, SCORE! Deflected and it is a 2 0 Avs lead. John Clem with the shot. Milan Hayduke with the tip while Peter Forsberg was tying up Mowry in front. I mean, there's not a goalie in the world that doesn't leave a rebound once in a while. It's getting there. Here's Drury on a break. Drury in. Drury scores! What a top shelf shot by Chris Drury, and it's 3 0 Colorado. Chris Drury during his Avs arc was money, and 3 0 may not seem insurmountable to us in 2023. But during the dead puck era, goals might as well have been coming in soccer volume. 3 0 was like facing a mountain. The third period was a complete and utter slog. Two line passes choked off the Kings' effort to get the defenseman active, and a full on north south every shift was snuffed. No frenzy on the Figaro this time. Falling apart. This is going to be the second bad penalty of this third period. Yep. That was the Kings' last mulligan, and it wasn't particularly inspiring. Being shut out for the third loss of a series is absolutely devastating. And that's just from my perspective as a fan. I have no idea how demoralizing it would be for a player. Especially against the Avs, who scored three goals on their first 12 shots, whose goalie had shut you out twice, making your own goalie look a lot less like a savior, and almost half of your own paltry goals coming from one guy. It was looking really, really bleak. And the Kings' one win was looking more and more like a fluke but they weren't out yet. Forewarning, Jack Edwards calls this game. If you can't fathom him calling a game straight, sorry, it's actually really cool to hear. Boy, this crew is really a who's who of the hockey world, isn't it? The game is on. Four. Locked down at the red line. Here's Palpy with the break in the first seconds. The backhander is saved by Wah. It was a pretty north-south period, the first. Lots of movement, though not many chances. But at least we got to see the appearance of a fast game, which was welcome after the doldrums to end game four. Forsberg on the doorstep, and Forsberg couldn't stick a fork in it. Two on two, break back the other way. Here's Miller, shot save while way out of his crease. Throws it across the middle, Nevenins, drive, saved by Potman. Rob Blake in the circle, the wrister goes just wide, glove side to Breeze. 
Can't knock it down at the line. Everson slugs it out to center zone. Smolenski over the line looking for Glenn Murray. Oh, Patrick Wise concentrating tonight. Yet another ticky-tack penalty against the Kings put them shorthanded. We've seen this movie before, haven't we? Loses it on Miller's check. Tange shot saved by Pachman. Up to Tange, knocks it out of the air. Hate him shot, goes just wide. After escaping by the skin of their teeth, the Kings came back to evens unfazed. Slot. Miller's wrister save, rebound pass Palfi to Hayda. The heightened action in turn heightened tempers, and at the end of that awesome first period, Pepsi Center was treated to a full-on scrum. Elimination games just bring out the dog in you, I guess. Eric Messier would land in the box, giving the Kings a royal opportunity to score first. They didn't even get a shot. And then they gave the Avs a power play. Wonderful. Playing with fire is putting it mildly. Nordstrom's trip was the Kings' 28th penalty of the series. That's almost seven penalties a game. Fortunately, the Avalanche's power play was equally inept as the Kings' discipline. Five minutes gone, second period. Elon Hayden tries the wrap all the way across the crease. Every chance the Kings' big guns got, they just couldn't beat Waugh. Stumble. Had a move on board. Shot saved by Juan. Forsberg's back on the back check. Smolinski waiting, throws it across the middle, Palfi, shot save, rebound goes wide. But not a game too late, Felix Potvin was giving Wa a run for his money. Save loose in the crease, Drury going oh. out, saved by Potvin, saved by Potvin, and he clamps down on it. Right into the chest of Felix Potvin, he's going short side high all the way folks, but he just cannot get that puck up. But Potvin could only outlast the Av skill so long. It's a giveaway, keep it in one-hander, save, rebound, in front, goal! Oh, Hayduck, unbelievable hand-eye coordination, Hayduck bats it in! Now, I hate to be the bearer of 22-year-old bad news, but as Potvan correctly points out, it was knocked in with a high stick. Only the rulebook could stop the Avs from finding Twine, it seemed. But this was a break the likes of which the King hadn't had in the series yet. In a tilt where their offensive production was just absolutely suffocated, to even have a prayer of winning the series, they needed the Avalanche to suffer mental setbacks like that one. They have taken the goal off the board. It was a small, tiny, cruelly minute opportunity for the Kings, but that would have to be enough to end up forcing a game six. In back, it bounces up on Tangay. Port tees it up, his drive. Knocked down in front, rebound. Still loose, gets poked back to Port's point. It's out of the zone by Stubble. Here's Palfi on the break. Ziggy Palfi on the shorthand. Saved by Wah. Still a 0-0 game. Emerson on the go. Lays it off. Smolenski. Shot saved by Wah. The Kings managed to escape disaster through 40, but only barely. For that matter, so did the Avs. With that said, Adam, notoriously, your hockey club only plays just well enough to win. Why is that? Oh, I don't know. I, you know, LA's got a great hockey club. They're they're playing uh, desperate right now, and that's a dangerous. That's always going to be a dangerous team. So we're just going to have to watch Paul Fee and guys like that get behind us. Seems like they're getting chances that way, and, and uh, get the puck deep. Well, that's Adam Foot dodging my question. Back to you guys up in the studio. Beep, beep. Uh, very good. Yeah. Very good. Beep, beep. <laughs> don't get me into the sound effect. <laughs> Schneider's drive saved by Wab on the chest rebound loose saved by Wab. One period may remain in this series. This may be the death knell for the Kings and a massive step towards a championship for the Avalanche. This goal is going to be a gigantic one. Is it Palfi? Is it Robitaille? Or is it the end of the L.A. season? Because if Matthew Schneider and his gang can't push it past Wah, they're going home for the summer. Looks middle, one-timer shot, save, stumble, robbed by Wah. Hate him, cycle. Work. His blast knocked down. Comes to Hayduck. His shot deflects and trickles just wide of the far post. Hustling on to the bouncing puck against Carolotti. Dingman closing shot. Saved by Potvin. He looked to his left, but the puck was in front of him. The pretty tough chances against him. Belanger. Robitaille scores! Look, Robitaille! What a play by Eric Belanger to win the faceoff and then control the puck despite it bouncing away from him after the draw. Then he draws foot to him, sending him spinning like a top as he passes to the slot through his legs, and Robitaille sinks it. Gorgeous play. That'll make you puff out your chest. Oddly enough, this was the one game of the series to date that the Kings had thoroughly outplayed the Avalanche in, and the remaining nine minutes 
gave them little to fear thanks to one Felix Potvin. Forsberg looking for an opening. He has it on the backhand, the shot. Oh, it just trickles wide. Potvin gets a piece of it, just enough. DeVries pinching in. Drury grabs the puck, walks in, shot, save Potvin. Looks in the crease, Vyslovsky takes it out of there. DeVries circling away from Robitaille. Into the middle, Drury shot, blocked down to the crease. Forsberg jams it in, the puck's in the net, and the ref waves it off. Drury mucking for the puck, Miller takes it away, and that keeps the keeper on the ice for the Avs. Nadek going in hard to the board, shot hits the post! Smolinski ringing the iron, 15 seconds to go for the desperate Avs, about to have to go back to Los Angeles, Murray dumps it back into the Colorado end, the Avs had the chance to put this thing away, they let the LA Kings get off the hook and back to state. Backs against the wall, even more direly than against the Red Wings, the Kings responded with their best game of the series and came away with a deserving win. But that's still a hurdle they needed to vault two more times. And Colorado wasn't a team that was going to go without scoring for long. For the record, with just over two minutes left, Bob Hartley burned some time to get his star players rested by changing goalies, sending in David Abisher to take the crease. For those of you that know the deep lore, this is exactly the same move that Mike Milbury made that led to the single worst goals against average in NHL history. But that's a story for another time. The Kings and Avs, whose fates were inextricably tied forever, were headed back to what could very well be the Kings' final game, not just in front of their home crowd, but at all in the 2001 season. Unfortunately for them, Joe Sackick returned for Game 6, and the question was whether or not he would be returning too early. If you didn't notice, there was a non-insubstantial amount of fog at the rink that day, due to the arena being 3 degrees higher than kosher. Personally, I like the look. There was a great pace to the first period, just like in Game 5. Here's a scoring try, a rebound! Loose in front of the net! He starts away, throwing it rink wide. Coffee. Put the handle. Denmark gets it and drives one right into the equipment of Wah. Period. Puck slides down into the Colorado zone, and uh, they were thinking icing, and Patrick Wah had to put his skate up against the post as the puck got up on edge and rolled right towards the net. It's just nasty. Nasty is bumped in against the board. Out front for Drury, and his weak shot. Went off a stick, a blast from the far boards, comes out front, Hayduk with the shot, doesn't get through, scramble, puck loose at the side of the net, Forsberg to the attack, Forsberg throws it out, Sackett got the shot, and Potman made the save. Bobatai dumps it in, Palfi goes after, in front, big save by Watts, and here he goes, in across the line, looking for Dave Reed, couldn't get the pass across. Like the prior game, the first would end without a score, but undeservingly so. Though afterwards, it was like there was never an intermission. Here's a two-on-one, high note and Drury, and Drury couldn't pick it up. They including a good back check by Potman. They jam away in front of the net. Potman trying to find it, and he finally gets to it. Oh, maybe. Across the line with Smolinski. Smolinski having some problems, makes a nice move in the high slot, dishes it off, oh. while makes the save on Murray. Schneider across to Viznovsky. Viznovsky in the slot. Palfi takes a shot, gets it again. Another shot off the post. Back to the point. Schneider shoots, saved by Wah. The rebound up front. Smolinski couldn't get it up and over. Back, couldn't get it out of the zone. Bodine gets it for Yell. Shot right on. Picked up by Smolinski. Smolinski takes a return pass, shoots. And Wah got a piece of that one. Flip a coin. That would be a better predictor of who would get the first one than just guessing. Goes to the net sack, it goes as well. There's the shot off the post by Stula, another shot, and that steered away. There's really not much for me to say about this game. It's just really exciting hockey. He wheels and fires wide of the net. Out front, Thomas with a shot. Was got it, wasn't quite sure. Now looks back to the line. There's the blast up high off the glass. Out front, Wah makes a huge save. To Forsberg, Forsberg trying to work away from a check. A wrap around drive. They jam away at it, even wow. in front. Wow. And Potman is down to make the save. <laughs> Center. Oh, what a save up. Here's a shot from the point. They jam away at it. And the whistle goes. There's Forsberg. Very calm. 
for Sackett, the shot right on, and the save by Cotman. And this game is going to remain scoreless through 40 minutes. The Avalanche are on a 13-second power play to start the third period. The in position, Blake winds up at the point, a shot through traffic. That hit Drury, and Drury is limping as he tries to make his way back up ice. I suppose I could say it was a rarity that the Avs' defense was opening up so many opportunities against, but that was likely a symptom of the D getting involved in the attack in the wake of scoring no goals the prior game. An embarrassing concept for a team like the Avs. Yet again, you just got this creeping feeling that as time went on, the next one was gonna be the only one. The Kings had slugged it out all through Game 5, and now for most all of Game 6. That kind of extended desperation inevitably is going to wear you out. And even if they won this one, Game 7 was still casting its shadow over the series. But they just didn't give. He's hit by Belanger. Now Belanger gets the shot as he came off the puck. Here's Hayduke with a shot and Puckman comes up with a save. Now Niemann trying to move in position. A backhand shot by Sackett goes wide. And then... In the final stages of regulation, the Achilles heel came back to bite him. Puts it up along the boards and out to center. Too, Too many, many men in the, the ice, ice for yep. the Los Angeles Kings. They had yep. six of them out there, and the officials caught it. It's one thing to take an on-ice penalty late in a game, but a bench minor is just so avoidable and thus all the more cruel for the Kings, who seem to be avoiding even strength like the plague. Forsberg. Feeds it back to Blake, the shot's steered away by Potman. Good save by Felix. Now a penalty coming up as Halfey was dumped as he tried to break out of the zone by Ray Bork, I believe. And only 5.5 seconds. I'm telling you, dude, flip a coin. For the second time in the series, and the first time since game one in this very building, we go to sudden death. Colorado was 1-1 one one in 2001 in overtime. The Kings were 3-0. Flying out of the gates, the Kings, after all they had done to come from behind against the Red Wings and win in the fashion they did, with the players they have, and make a massive dent in Colorado's playoff run, were not going to go gentle, especially against their former captain, who seemed destined for bigger and better things. The Kings didn't get a whole lot of looks in overtime, but the Avalanche got next to none. But all either team could ever need was one. Hoffy goes after it again, back to the line. There's the shot to save by Wall. Forsberg is there. Forsberg gets control. Forsberg tried to throw it out the short side, get it across ice, and the Perrier got it tangled up. The skate pushes it ahead to Denmark. Denmark tried to go across to after the fun, uh, puck. Robitaille in front of the net. And he was looking for a deflection. Here's a shot fired wide by Boucher. Put all the risk on top of the fact that Joe Sackick, in his return game, was getting his looks but was really taking a beating. A bad right shoulder got smushed again between two King defenders late in OT. And if this series went on much longer with as sparse success as the Avs offense had had, it may have serious repercussions after they moved on. If they moved on. The Kings had to take advantage of a generational talent being less than 100%. The Avs had to win despite it. But this is the 14th 0-0 overtime game in the playoffs. Now it's Emerson to the attack. Emerson long shot up high on Wah. Yell. And across the line. Yell from a sharp angle. The shot right on. Yell gets it again. A wraparound try. Potman's got it. Steal by Emerson. He gets it across to Smolinski. Score! The 2001 Kings were like tardigrades. They just could not be killed. Somehow they had shut out the Avalanche, the President's Trophy winners, for two games, 
an unthinkable feat, particularly facing elimination when the Avs had crushed the Canucks 5-1 in their one closeout game prior to the series. Potvan and Wah to that point were the all-time leaders with Harry Lumley for Game 7 starters. So it's fitting that this series was going to go to the distance, just to add a little bit more to the NHL's history books. This would be the final time Blake, Deadmarsh, Miller, and Reinprecht and their teams would cross paths this season. And tonight those ships will pass each other, one to greener pastures and one to bitter defeat, each of them taking with them a piece of the other and eternally wondering, what if? the linesman Brad Lazarowicz and Mark Wheeler and we're underway. The winner goes on to meet the St. Louis Blues in the Western Conference Finals. Right away, quick shot, stopped by Potvin. Here's Sackett, two on one, he's got Tangay with him, Sackett the shot to pop in the save. Tangay got the rebound to Milan Hayden and another save by Felix Potvin. Bork is back for the touch and they're on their feet in Denver reacting to the offense by the Avs, but they're cheering in L.A. because of the goaltending of Potvin. Absolutely. Too the cat looks cool and calm to start this one. Here's first, but down low. Miller hacking at him. Seven feet. Great stop by Potvin. Ott knocked away. Stefan Yell on him. Yell is buried by Stumpel. Not one to be upstaged, lest it be forgotten, Felix Potvin had shut out the Avalanche for over eight straight periods. Again, the best team in the NHL. The first period thundered by before anyone knew what happened. But nobody could predict the outcome of this game. From close quarters. But from the puck's perspective, it's too tight. Here's Blake shot score! Rob Blake! And it's a power play goal! There's Rob Blake again in the killer game for one team, and he bites his old team, who gave him away, again. Absolute pain if you're a Kings fan. It was the first goal the Avalanche had scored since game four. As Steve Levy points out, that goal answers a lot of questions surrounding the Avalanche, namely their offensive production and their power play. It took a while, but better it come finally at the right time than continually at the wrong. Potvan, ever rising to the task on bigger and bigger stages, did not shrink away. Kept out by Potvin, and he stopped for the second time as well. And a shot, stick save. Potvin allows his defense to get to it. Off Villa, Sedley feed, stopped by Potvin. And the Abs will get to it and shoot it, knocked out of mid end, but right to come. After being thoroughly outplayed to that point, the Kings finally started to come alive halfway through the game. Gives it off for Smolinski now. Here's Smolinski. Towards the front of the tip. Off the post. Boucher was coming in. It took a while, but they finally found their hope spot. You mentioned earlier how tough the Kings have been on Forsberg. I think they've been the toughest on him tonight. Shot score! Nelson Emerson has tied the game at one. It's the traffic in front. The defenseman went down. It went up high. Patrick Wall lost sight of it. And believe it or not, this goes over his shoulder and into the net. So that tells me it might have been a bit of a dropper. Does it hit him at all? No, it's wobbling, wobbling. You can, see, you can tell. Patrick Wall lost sight of this puck at some point. He just couldn't track it down. It went off the end of the blade of the stick and dropped a little bit. And they almost had more. Got the low Los Angeles goal right now, and he's still coming. Centering feet, shot, post. Smolinski in front of the net with three seconds left. Oh, off the feed from Nelson. A crucial missed opportunity to absolutely crush their Western Conference rivals' spirits, going into what would have been the final regulation period of the season for one of them. And it goes by the wayside. And now, inevitability finally showed its head. Skula picks it up, he's in the center, feed shot! That might have hit off the post, or was it Reinprecht's stick that hit the post? Three seconds left in period number two. Here's Forsberg, and it crossed the line. Center, feed shot, score! Chris Drury has given the abs a 2-1 lead! What a shot by Drury. The Los Angeles Kings may have 
been guilty of a bad line change, Murray's line jumped onto the ice. Would have been a good matchup because neither one of the big three on the blue line were on the ice for Colorado. Here's Ryan Trek at center trying to make the move. He spun around. Penalty coming up. It'll be a delayed call. And here's Bork winding it up. Off for Neiman. Shot score! Billy Neiman in off the crossbar. Defenseman sticks there, and, and that could very well have glanced off the blade. Felix Potvin's look, though. He's the puck in one of the posts earlier. Here's a chance from the angle. Long shot brought by Rob. Look to open things up just a bit. Hoffman yeah. finds Dan Mark. Drop from Norsen. Shot stop. Rebound. Stop by Rob. Maybe his finest save of the game on Joseph Stumble. And it just comes out across the line. Looking to break. Here's Tenge. Shot stop. By Felix Potvin. Uh, they've been very consistent in their approach, thinking only of the Stanley Cup. Centering feed, Sean Pony, shot score! And it's 4 1 Colorado! Felix Potvin on the bench for an extra attacker here, trailing by three goals. And there's no quit in Andy Murray. He has done this before. Having clawed and scratched further than anyone could have expected against the two greatest teams of their era, the Kings walked away from the 2001 playoffs defeated, but both the players and the fans never forgot the titanic effort that those 20 players put forth. Regardless of who won and lost, the what-ifs carried by either team would remain. What if the Kings had held on to Blake? Would they have been in a better position in the playoffs? What if they had purely been sellers in the trade instead of getting win now pieces back? Would they have set themselves up for a better future? Nobody will ever know. All that can be known is that on the other side, there stand two of your brothers, who you shed blood and sweat with. Because of how circumstances demanded you switch allegiances, now you are permanently on separate paths. Maybe it would be better for you if they had remained yours. Maybe it was best for them if they moved on. But the games are over, and the trophies given that might have been won. And all that's left is to wonder about the vision of departed days, and the dark refrain of might have been.